Hey there and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. And as you can see I have done a bit of planning because today we are going to build ourselves a mountain base. Now I will go over the different rooms here as we mine them out. Right now we're starting off with a simple entrance. And while doing so we find some plasteel. Now, plasteel might be one of the best, if not the best, material in the game. As you can already see here, it takes a ton of time to mine, which already hints at its insane durability. That durability, by the way, is a lot, lot tougher than that of the strongest stone in the game, which would be granite, so plasteel might just be the ultimate building material. There are a few reasons why we should think twice about using it though. Number one, building something from plasteel takes a long, long time. And number two, plasteel is pretty damn rare. So in my opinion, the best course of action here will be to save it, especially also because we need some to build a spaceship later on in the game. Now while Cambiar is sleeping after an afternoon of mining, we get some visitors, but they are just passing by and unfortunately have nothing to trade. Now, as you can see in our entryway, I left some gaps there on the left, and those exist on purpose, because they can be used for cover. Should our colony ever get attacked, we can place a few of our ranged colonists in those gaps, and from there they can then fire at the entrance. Eventually, we will likely move those a bit further down the corridor, where they can then give cover to guys with long-range weapons such as sniper rifles. Now, just a few moments after our visitors have left, we get contacted again, this time once again by a refugee who's being chased by pirates. And as always, we are going to offer our help. Alright, here she is, Kalian, that's how I would pronounce it, a pretty good colonist with high ratings in social and intellectual, and considering that we have quite a bit of mining, hauling and building to do, I think she might just stay with us for a while longer. And here are now her attackers, probably the strongest raid we've had so far. Five guys, and as far as I can tell, at least four of them are equipped with modern ranged weapons. So let's hope our defenses do their job. Kalian in the meantime will quickly equip herself with a bow. Should one of the attackers get through, that will provide us with some extra firepower. Both Cambiar and Kalian can then take positions and we can watch the situation unfold. That's number one down. That's number two. And here's number three and that is more than half of the group eliminated and that causes the rest of the enemies to flee. We likely won't have any luck pursuing here, but we just acquired three corpses and a bit of interesting equipment. And not only that, we also had some cargo pods crashing down as well. Their contents? 14 lavish meals. Perfect timing in my opinion, considering that we now have a colonist who is not a cannibal. Although I have to admit, I will probably not focus too much on keeping Kaylee unhappy. At the moment, she is a much needed help, especially when it comes to hauling. But we'll have to see about her long term role with the colony. And you might have just caught that, yes, one of the attackers was carrying a machine pistol. And even though Cambiar is back to mining for now, we will likely give him that shortly as an upgrade over his bow. Very interesting here, by the way, the plasteel vein looks a lot larger than I first thought. And eventually we will of course try to mine out the entire thing, but for the moment we'll stick to the plan. Now Kalian has occupied the sleeping spot outside, which is of course not ideal, and so we are quickly going to build her another one inside of the shelter that Cambiar spent his first days in. That will of course also not fill her with joy, after all she will still be sleeping on the floor and in the cold, but next to the steam geyser it will at least be a bit warmer. While Kalian then goes to fetch the lavish meals on the next morning, we are notified that she is sensing an ancient danger nearby. And that ancient danger would be inside of the structure here. We don't really know what it is at the moment. Opening these up is always a risky endeavor, because it is indeed possible that there is a small army of robots hiding behind the wall. So uh, we'll leave this be for the moment, but should we ever have a colonist to spare and maybe also a strong group of visitors on the map, then we might consider lifting the secret. 
Inside of the mountain, meanwhile, Cambiar is still working on the Plasteel, while Kalian proceeds to haul the first batch back outside. That room that Cambiar is now slowly progressing towards, that's going to be his new bedroom. Yes, a bit smaller than the one he has right now, but it also won't need to hold as much, because the research bench will eventually be placed in a second room. The next morning then starts with another small gift from Randy Random, a snow hare has self-tamed, and that is great news, it will spare us a bit of hunting. We are quickly going to assign the snow hare to our home area, that way it won't roam around the map on its own, and one of our colonists won't have to walk as long should we want to slaughter it. With the hauling inside of the base taken care of for the moment, we then have another job for Kalian. There is some ship junk just outside of our base, and I think we will now have her deconstruct that and bring the contents back to the base. Unfortunately though, our plan is quickly interrupted. Another raid has started and this time we're not facing a tribe of pirates. No, this time we're going up against two mechanoids. These particular ones are Scythers, fast-moving robots who are incredibly dangerous in melee combat, but who also have pretty accurate long-range weaponry. Just like a normal pirate though, they can be taken out by steel deadfall traps, and that is also what I'm hoping for with these two. Now while they are approaching, we also had a bit of a cargo drop here, and 178 corn are now waiting to be hauled back to the base, but let's focus on the attack first. Our first attacker falls after only the second trap, and unlike other raiding parties, mechanoids will never flee, so his companion approaches our defenses as well, but luckily he also does not make it through. After the raid then Kamyar goes back to mining, our self-tamed snow hare has also made it back to the base, and Kalian is hauling back the mechanoid corpses, which are quite valuable even though we cannot slaughter them, but with machining already researched we have the option to disassemble them, and that will yield us a few valuable materials. The next day then begins with a bit of improvised stockpiling. All of our stockpiles are currently filled to the maximum, but we still have that corn waiting to be hauled back, so I have put down a temporary stockpile around the steam geyser. With that in place, we can send Kalian out to do some hauling. Unfortunately though, our rather poor treatment of her shows its effects, as Kalian has her first mental break. Now she is going on a slaughtering spree here, targeting our animals, and to be honest that might just be the most convenient mental break we could have asked for. I wanted to slaughter our snow hare anyway, now Kalian has taken up the job, and that also already concludes her mental break, so she can now immediately get back to hauling. Cambiar then finishes mining out his new bedroom, and with the plasteel moved to the stockpile he can now also help out with the corn. Another morning starts out on the ice sheet and another room is waiting to be mined out. This one is going to be a bit of a common room, we will eventually have a big dining table here, one or two objects to increase our colonist's joy, and I think we'll also have the research bench in here. Conveniently enough, we also once again find some valuable resources while mining, this time some steel which will gladly add to our reserves. A bit more surprising then, this rather large open area here. Seems like we're not the first ones to mine into the mountain here, but we get no warning of an ancient danger, so I think we have nothing to fear. Once again we then receive some positive news here. Our next event is the second meteorite of this playthrough, and once again it is pure silver. So some free money has crashed down on the map here, but for the moment we are busy mining elsewhere, so we'll simply have to keep it in mind. By the way, if you're wondering while Kalian is not helping with the mining, her mining skill is only at level 1, so she would be mining at a fraction of Cambia's speed, therefore I think she's better off hauling. In the evening then the room is entirely mined out, we will have to add some finishing touches such as deconstructing the wall in the middle, but for the most part I'm satisfied with the progress. Now overnight I've quickly given a few orders here, starting off with a few doors to get a bit of structure going, but we're also going to smooth the floor inside of the hallway and the bedroom. This will take a while, but it gives a nice bonus to the room's beauty stat, and we're also not wasting any materials to achieve that. 
Contrary to mining, this is also a task that Kalian can help with. Smoothing the floor here is, I believe, a construction-based skill, and in that skill she is at least at level 4, so while Cambia will still work noticeably faster, Kalian can also do her part. A few hours later then, all floors are smoothed, we have deconstructed the slate wall in the common room, and Cambiar is already busy slaughtering the remains of our very first raid in this episode. Slaughtering humans will of course not sit well with Kalian, who is neither a psychopath nor a cannibal, but then again her mood has not been our main priority in the first place. As we're once again running out of storage room, we put another stockpile down here. The bedroom to be will have to wait for a while for its new function. For the moment, it will host a variety of dead men's clothing. To give the finishing touches to our common room, we then construct a steel wall. That will close it off from the rather misshaped open area next to it. And so we now have the second of five rooms finished and can now queue up the next mining orders. And while Cambiar is digging away, we can quickly give some warmer equipment to Kalian. Her constant hypothermia was getting a bit annoying, and for the moment at least we want to keep her alive, because I have to admit she is being a tremendous help as we dig out our base here. The room that Cambiar is currently working on will eventually become a bit of a workshop. We currently have a butcher table and a tailoring bench who could both fit in there. As the base increases in size, those will probably get their separate rooms, but for the moment those two workbenches and very likely a machining table as well will fit in very nicely in the room that Cambiar is just digging out. Once again, we can also queue up some smoothing here so Kalian can make herself useful. And a few hours later, in the evening, the room is entirely mined out. The next morning starts with hauling and smoothing, I have slightly expanded the dumping stockpile behind our defenses, and that is where Cambiar is currently hauling all the stone chunks. A very productive day passes by, but our two colonists are not quite able to finish their work, so they get right back to it on the next morning. However, their efforts are quickly being interrupted, because we have some chocolate raining down from the skies. Now, chocolate is a pretty interesting food item in RimWorld. It has a pretty low nutrition and is therefore not really well suited as a full meal. However, to make up for that, it fills the joy meter. So, especially for unhappy colonists, it might be smart to grab a bite here and there. And looking at Kalian's mood, she could definitely use some. While she's hauling the precious goods back, Cambia finishes smoothing the floor, and so we can actually start furnishing a bit. The workshop is up first, I have already told Cambia to bring the tailoring bench and the butcher table in here, and just like I said earlier, we're also going to build a machining table. That machining table requires electricity, so we can't do much with it at the moment, but once we have it hooked up, we can use it to disassemble the mechanoids. Now since we have quite a few steel reserves, I was about to switch to the more comfortable steel dining chairs here. At that point, however, Kalian had another mental break. This time she's just wandering around in a psychotic state and not hurting anyone. So uh, we'll leave her be, but of course this slows things down a bit. For that reason, it also takes until the next morning that Cambia has everything installed, but now the workshop is finished for the moment. And that brings us to the fourth and by far biggest room. Now this circular shape here, that is going to be our storage room. Yes, we already have a small one, but this one is going to be hooked up with an orbital trade beacon. That is also the reason for the somewhat odd shape of the room, which coincidentally marks the exact radius of the beacon. Everything inside of that radius can then be traded using the comms console, which is what that last 3x3 room next to the bedroom is going to be for. Now, while Cambia is mining, Kalian's misfortunes don't seem to stop. While being on her mental break, she also gets sick with fibrous mechanites. Now, this is a blessing and a curse as well. The fibrous mechanites do increase manipulation and movement speed. The disease is also not deadly, but it causes noticeable amounts of pain. So, Kalian's mood, which is already far from perfect, will be even lower for a while. However, on the plus side, she will work a bit faster. At night then, Kalian has recovered from a mental break and both her and Cambiar are fast asleep, and we have our first escape pod crash on the ice sheet. 
Now Ben here is pretty seriously hurt and will die in about 13 hours, and I don't think we're going to waste our medicine on him, so uh, we'll let those 13 hours pass by and then add another corpse to the stockpile. Alright, here he is, Ben has died and that means Kalian can haul his body back to the base. It looks like we might have to call her off though, because once again we are being attacked by Scythus. Now we were already able to handle two of those in the past and I think we will be able to do so again, but uh, let's be safe here and take up defensive positions anyway. Alright, lovely. Once again, none of the attackers make it through, and so Kalian and Kambiar can continue to go about their business. Kalian can finally haul Ben's corpse back to the base, while Kambiar is making some decent progress in the storage room. The next day then passes by without any further incidents, but Kalian is slowly but steadily getting bored. And since she is a pretty decent researcher, I thought we might as well put that to good use, and so we'll have a start our next research project, and that would be solar panels. That will allow us to diversify our power sources a bit, we won't have to rely exclusively on the rather sporadic wind turbine, and since we are slowly but steadily putting a bit of electrical equipment in place, I think it's a good idea to also take care of the power supplies. I think batteries would then be a good next investment, but let's take one step after another. Now while Cambiar is mining, you might wonder why I left those four pillars standing in the middle. And of course I didn't do that because I think it looks good, it is actually done to prevent the roof from collapsing. In Rimworld, any roof that is overhead mountain can only be 6 tiles away from a wall, and so since our storage room is 15 tiles wide, we have to leave some kind of structure in the middle to avoid a collapse. Now Cambiar is slowly but steadily getting closer to the end here, as we are once again being contacted with a call for help. Now this one we are going to decline, and the reason for that is pretty simple. Since we are now frequently being attacked by Scythus, this tells me that our colony's wealth has increased by quite a bit. The strength of your opponents takes your colony's wealth into account, which is also reason why in the early game all of the raids were pretty weak. Now the base is growing and we are collecting more and more equipment, and that of course increases colony wealth. So had we accepted here, the next raid might have been a pretty big one, and at the moment we have enough food, so I don't want to cause any unnecessary risks to our colonists. We now approach noon of the next day, and believe it or not, Cambiar has finished digging. Our new storage room is completely mined out, and so we can now once again increase our dumping stockpile and begin hauling. Now we jump ahead almost two days, the hauling is still not finished, but Kalian is once again having a mental break. Also once again, she's just wandering around and not causing harm to anyone, and so it takes Cambiar a further few hours until the storage room is finally emptied out. In the middle of it, we can now place the orbital trade beacon, and as you can see, the radius aligns perfectly with the room's outer walls. A short while later, we once again receive cargo pods, these ones have venison in them, and since you can never have enough food out on the ice sheet, Cambia will immediately get moving. Now, this right here unfortunately also marks a turning point for Kalian. Her psychotic wandering around in the cold has left her with serious hypothermia, and that has now rendered her unable to move. So she's now lying out here in the snow, unable to help herself, and uh, as cruel as it might seem, we're not going to do anything about that. Our mountain base is almost entirely mined out, so we don't need her help anymore. We also don't really have that much food left to feed her with, which will in turn also once again increase the chance for a mental break. So at this point, dear Kalian, I can say thank you for the help, but it will probably not take long until Cambiar eats you. <laughs> And indeed here we are, Kalian dies from hypothermia, but her efforts to help build our mountain base will not be forgotten. Now Cambia went to bed early today, and so he's already in bed as we have another crashed escape pod here. 
Its inhabitant does not seem incredibly useful to us, and so we will once again wait for the cold and the injuries to do their job. In the meantime, Cambiar is digging out the last small room here. It's just going to be a tiny 3x3 chamber, just big enough to fit the comms console inside. Once the room is mined out, Cambia returns to the butcher table, and first under the knife is none other than Kalian. A small stockpile right next door then provides some easy storage room, and eventually it will also allow us to use Cambia's new bedroom as a, well, bedroom. Not that much left to do here until the base is completed. Cambia is smoothing over the floor here a bit, and once that is taken care of, we can put down the comms console. Now, the comms console allows you to contact other factions out on the rim world, but it also allows you to contact interstellar traders should they pass by. And that happens from time to time and is an excellent way to trade some goods. Especially out here on the ice sheet where normal traders are pretty rare, the comms console's value for trade cannot be overstated. Of course, it also once again needs electricity, but we'll take care of that in due time. Now I also had Cambiar clean out his new bedroom, and so we can now move the bed, the dresser, and the end table inside. The heater is not really needed at the moment. I used it in the beginning to avoid hypothermia. Now though, Cambiar can resist temperatures of over minus 100 degrees, so I don't really think it will be necessary. We can also quickly move the light and the research bench. The light once again will not have power for the moment, but we will solve that very soon. The next morning then, Cambia can head out to finally deconstruct the ship junk. Remember, that was a task originally meant for Kalian, but now that she's gone, Cambia can take care of it, because we slowly but steadily need the components. Then, while we're increasing the stockpile inside of the mountain base, we have another raid coming in, this time landing right outside. Once again, a Scyther is paying us a visit, but this one falls immediately to the first deadfall trap. Now, Scythers and drop pods, that's also one of the reasons we went for a mountain base here. This one could have dropped right inside of our base. That is, of course, unless that base is covered by Overhead Mountain. And so we survive another attack and can now watch Cambiar haul things back and forth. I would say we've made some great progress today. The only major thing that is still left to do is to add a bit of electricity, but that is at the top of my list for the next episode. Now at this point, also my apologies that this episode took a while. The last few weeks have been extremely busy, and this has definitely not been my most productive month, but I just finished another series and that cleared up some space in my schedule, so hopefully the next episode will be out a bit sooner. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then please leave a thumbs up. And of course, as always, if you want to support the channel, then go ahead and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.